Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyArmarketing.com. In this video, we're going to talk about saved audiences within the Facebook or Meta Ads Manager. So to get there, you just want to go to your audiences area and we can go ahead and click on Create and Saved Audience. And the saved audience is exactly like it sounds. Basically, it's an audience that you've created that you want to be able to use again and again and again. So basically, you don't have to reselect any of your settings. So if you went through and you set up a bunch of demographic information or interests or behaviors, you can just reuse that audience because you'll have it saved as a saved audience instead of recreating the wheel every single time. Also, one of the more powerful things about saved audiences is that if you use the saved audience across various campaigns or ad sets, and then you realize like you messed something up or you left something out, you can just come back to this one saved audience, update it, and it'll update all the audiences across all the ad sets that use this saved audience. And speaking from experience, that can save you a bunch of time because you just have to change one audience instead of going from one ad set to the other and updating those different audiences one at a time. So anyway, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory and you'll see the same exact options when you are creating an ad set. But I'll cover some of the highlights in this video right here. So. Up first, we have audience name. And so you probably want to name it something as specific as possible so that way you can remember what this saved audience actually is. So I'm going to say for this one, engage with business, exclude leads. So I'm going to be using my custom audiences for this particular saved audience. So we'll click into here and I'm going to go ahead and select watch 75% or more of my video in seven days. And I'll also select my all website visitors in the last seven days. So these are people that have engaged with my business. And then I'll go ahead and add an exclusion right here. So exclude, and I wanna go ahead and exclude my leads in the last 30 days. And of course this right here would make a great retargeting audience because I'll be showing ads to individuals that have engaged with my page, but did not become a lead yet. So I probably wanna show them ads for lead magnets so I can get them to join my email list. And then there's several other settings, but I'm gonna leave it wide open because I'm retargeting people that have already engaged with my business. So I would just go ahead and create a saved audience here. And then we'll go ahead and create another saved audience. So saved audience. And then this one's going to be look alike, but we're gonna exclude our engaged people. So people that have visited our website or engaged with our Facebook page. And we're also gonna go ahead and exclude our lead. So this will be completely cold traffic that hasn't seen our business yet. And so we'll be showing this audience ads to get them into the top of our marketing and advertising funnel. So let's go ahead and select our custom audience right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select the look alike 1% leads audience that I have right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add several exclusions. And I just select all the people that have engaged with my business here. So I have my watch greater than 75% of my video, all of my website visitors in the last seven days, and then all of my leads in the last 30 days. So this is gonna be excluding all the people that have interacted with my business or has become a lead. And so this audience should contain only cold people to my business. So anyway, I'm not going to adjust any of these settings in this particular audience either, but in the next one, we'll go over some of these settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on create saved audience. Then we'll do create audience and saved audience again. And let's go ahead and talk about some of these other settings down here now. So of course we have locations. So you wanna make sure that you're selecting locations where your customers are. And of course that's pretty self-explanatory, but if we click this drop down here, you can see that you can add additional locations as well. So we could go ahead for advertising to Canada too. We can go ahead and select the Canada country region. So now we have both the United States and Canada here. And you might've noticed that there's exclusions too. So if you click this little drop down, we can go ahead and add an exclusion. So maybe for whatever reason, we can't sell our product or our service in Florida. So we could go ahead and add an exclusion for Florida right here. And so now we're advertising to all the United States except for Florida and also all of Canada. So pretty cool. They can really narrow down on different locations. So that's how you can go ahead and include or exclude different locations. Now, one other thing about locations is you could go ahead and drop like a pin or an address somewhere. So let's say that we have a business here in Spring Hill and we wanna advertise just in this small radius right here of Spring Hill. And we wanna make sure that we're under includes. So switch over to include. And then we can select to drop a pin. So we can drop a pin right here. And then you can see that you can go ahead and add a radius around a certain location. So if we wanna try and dominate, you know, a five to seven mile radius around our business, we could go ahead and drop a seven mile radius around our business right here. And then we could just flood that entire radius with our advertisements for our business. So there's a lot of great options for locations here, especially if you have a small location or area that you service, then you can really hone in and dominate that market by using the location feature. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to the whole of the United States. Up next we have age and that's pretty self-explanatory right here. So you can select the ages that are most likely to buy your products and services. So maybe you're at 20, 
five to 50 or something like that. Now, one other tip for selecting audiences, Facebook wants you to go pretty broad on this stuff because they have a ton of details and metrics on all of their users. And when you create your ads and ad sets, Facebook's going to read your ads. It's going to check out your landing pages. It's going to use AI and algorithms to understand what's going on on your pages, what your offer is, all this type of stuff. And then it's going to align your pages and offers and ads with their entire user database. So even if you go super broad on your audiences right here, Facebook is smart enough to know what you're trying to offer and who would be most inclined to take you up on that offer. So when it comes to creating audiences, broader is actually better because Facebook's algorithm is so smart and they have so many details that they'll make up for any places that you mess up on. But anyway, moving down, gender self-explanatory here, languages also self-explanatory, and I'm not gonna go into any details here. But up next we have detailed targeting. So here you can go ahead and select different demographics, interests, and behaviors for your target audience. So you can go ahead and just search right here if you want to. So I could go ahead and search for, let's say dogs. And we can see that it brings up a whole bunch of different options right here. And you wanna be very mindful of what you're selecting. So like dogs, animals as interests means that it's somebody that has shown interest in a dog. Not that they're a dog owner per se, or that they buy dog products, but just that maybe they liked a picture of a dog or a puppy running through a field with butterflies. And so that might not be who you actually wanna target. So you need to pay attention to what it says over on the right hand side. So interest is very broad. Employers is quite specific. So this is people that work or have been employed by Dogs Trust. So that's a pretty specific audience of only 4,600 to 5,400 people. That's a really tiny audience, but if you're advertising to people who were employed or are employed by Dogs Trust, well then that's probably a high quality audience. But let's move on down here. So a lot of interests. So let's try and find something else. Let's do dog, oh, dog owner. And we can see right here, we found owner slash dog trainer, which is a job title. And that's very small too. Around 3000 and some people, that's not gonna be good enough. And then it also brought up small business owners, which is a behavior. And this is a pretty large audience, digital activities, small business owners, but doesn't really have anything to do with dogs. So if you're having a hard time finding what you want, you can also click this browse option right here and it lists out the demographics, interests, and behaviors. So you might be able to find what you're looking for or something close to it by navigating through these different categories. So for example, we can click on demographics here and you can see like education, financial, life events, parents, relationship, and so on. So you can click into them even further and then you could look up like education level. So we could see people or show ads to people that are high school grads or currently in college and so on. So this could help you find the people that you're trying to show ads to. And there's a lot of different options in here. So there's a lot to browse through and look at. We can look at financial income. And so you could go ahead and target the rich people, but you also kind of have to ask yourself how Facebook gets this information on how rich people are and how accurate it might be. So just because it says that it has this information inside of it doesn't mean that it's always 100% accurate. So even though something might sound super awesome and like it might be exactly what you want, Facebook's information may not be 100% accurate. So just take some of this stuff with a grain of salt. Coming on down here, you can see life events here and see if people are away from family, away away from their hometown, in a new relationship, newlyweds, parents with children, older children, younger children, etc. So a bunch of different options and it makes it kind of easy to identify your audience. Then there's interests as well. So a lot of different interests as we kind of talked about previously when we were looking for dogs or dog owners. And again, interests tend to be very, very broad. So in a second here, I'll show you how you can go ahead and stack different interests and kind of narrow in on who you actually want. But as you can see, there's tons and tons of interest in here from home and garden to pets or animals. And look, here we go, dogs, animals. So we just, so we'll select that interest just because we're down here, but you can see a lot of different ones as well. Here's politics, if you wanna target people for politics or vehicles or shopping and fashion, lots of different options. And then same concept with behaviors here. So this one can be useful because you can target different people based off of like their mobile device or their digital activities. Let's click into here. So if they have new businesses, shops, admins, here's another digital activity. So we have operating systems used, people that have used Facebook payments in the last 30 days or 90 days, Facebook page admins. So maybe if you're trying to sell a course on Facebook advertising, you might target you know, Facebook page admins because they're probably looking to grow their Facebook page presence. And we'll scroll on down, internet browser used, mobile device user. So you can select the different mobile device options 
options, so Android or Facebook access, and so on. So a lot of different options in here, and you can narrow down your audience. But that's what I'll talk about right now is stacking your different interests or demographics or behaviors to get what you really want. So right now I'm targeting interests, hobbies and activities, pets, animals, and people that like dogs in particular. And if we scroll up here, we can see that my audience is about 46 to 55 million individuals. And that's a pretty massive audience. Now, like I said earlier, broader audiences are typically better than narrow audiences because Facebook has so much data. And so I might be able to run with this ginormous audience, but I usually try and keep it around 2 million or so personally. So I'm gonna try and narrow this down. So you see this option right here for narrow audience. We can click on this. And then maybe we throw in some brands like PetSmart. And we can go ahead and select people that like the PetSmart company. So we have PetSmart right there because people that like pets or dogs and also like PetSmart are probably likely to be buying toys and food and stuff like that for their pet dogs. So it kind of makes sense to stack those two interests together. And so if we scroll up here, we can see that my audience shrank to about 19 million to 22 million. So about halved in size. And so this is probably a lot more specific. And maybe I'll throw in another company here that sells dog supplies. So let's see, Chewy this option available the chewy.com pet supplies right here and we check out my audience so it's still about 19 to 20 million people and that's just fine like that it seems PetSmart has a very large audience and you can see about you know half a billion people like PetSmart pet supplies and I could go ahead and narrow further if I wanted to maybe I want to look for somebody with the behavior so engaged shoppers is a behavior that's often used because these are people that have clicked on the call to action shop now in the past week and you can see that it's a large audience of about 760 million to 893 million people have clicked on the shop now button in the last week and if we look at how we stack things up so we have about 12 to 14 million people that are interested in having dogs as pets or animals or shown interest in it they are also interested in chewy.com or PetSmart and they're also an engaged shopper. This would probably be a pretty good audience to target if we're selling some sort of dog supply or toy or food or anything like that. And so let's come back up here and go ahead and name this audience. So I would go ahead and call this saved audience, dogs and pet companies and engaged shoppers. So that way I can keep track of what all this audience includes right here. And then I'd go ahead and click on create saved audience. And then I realized what I probably wanna do is go ahead and exclude people that have engaged with my business and my leads as well. So we can go ahead and open this audience back up we can go ahead and click on actions here and edit. And I could go ahead and add those exclusions really quick. So I can go ahead and exclude my watch 75% of my video, my leads, and also my website visitors. So that way it is completely cold traffic. And then I can go ahead and update my audience again. And my audience was now updated. So you can see how you can go ahead and edit your audience. So if you need to make changes to it later on, you can easily do so. Now, one other thing before we wrap this video up, you can see when you click on the audience, this menu pops out over here and this is where we want to edit the audience. You can also see where you're using this particular audience. So you can click on usage here and you can see where, what campaigns, ad sets you're using this particular audience in. And so that can be very useful if you're wondering if you're even using a saved audience or not. And then you can quickly identify where that saved audience is located. And this concept works with all the audiences. So, you know, I could click on this watch greater than 75% of my video and I can see where this audience is used as well. And so I just wanted to point that out real quick. How to actually use this saved audience in a campaign. So we're gonna go over to our campaigns area here and I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new campaign and we'll leave it on auction and we'll say we're driving leads and continue. Links in the description down below if you need more info on running a campaign. But right now I'm just showing you how to actually use the saved audience. So we're gonna go ahead and select manual setup here. So manual leads campaign and continue. And we need to go to the ad set level because that's where you select your audience. So we'll select the ad set level here. And then we're going to select website. And then we're gonna go ahead and scroll on down to the audience selection area. So we're disregarding all this stuff. So I can show you how to use the saved audience. And you see right here, we have the advantage plus audience. Well, we wanna go ahead and switch it to the original audience options. We'll click this option and it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna do that? You might lower your potential outcome by 33%. And that's because they're really pushing this advantage plus audience and it's definitely worth testing the different options. So you can do a saved audience and you can compare it to a custom audience and you can compare it to an advantage plus audience. And so you can try different audiences to see which one gives you the best result. And since we wanna use our saved audience, we're gonna go ahead and use the original audience option right here. And we can scroll on down and you can see the option now to use a saved audience. So click on that 
And in this case, let's go ahead and use our saved audience that has the dogs interests as well as the pet smart or chewy interests and also that are engaged shoppers. So that's how you could go ahead and use your saved audience. And then again, you wanna go ahead and compare it to different audience targeting options and see which one gives you the best result. And so that is it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, and or check out creativemarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.